Who would have ever imagined that it would be very easy to reconnect with old friends or classmates with just a couple of clicks? Oh, what joy it brought to be able to seamlessly reunite with loved ones far away from home. Who doesn't remember how engaging and addictive this platform had turned out to become? Well, this is now history. And it is safe to say that the enthusiasm Facebook had galvanized for itself is recently quickly fading away. In the tech universe, 18 years is long enough to have your users get tired of your product and move on to the next guy with the newest ideas on the block. The last quarter of 2021 has clearly proven this to the once addictive social media platform, Facebook. So, what's up with Facebook now? Why is the number of its users falling? What does the future really hold now for the company? Facebook is an American online social network powerhouse owned by Meta Incorporated, its parent company. Facebook was founded in 2004 by Mark Zuckerberg, Eduardo Saverin, Dustin Moskovitz, and Chris Hughes. The story of its origin is quite complicated. All four of these founders were at the time students of Harvard University. The idea of creating such platform was to allow students judge how attractive their fellow students were. This was in 2003 and at the time the online platform was called Facemash. But two days later, it was shut down by the university for violating school regulations in acquiring resources for the service. Prior to its shutdown, the site had already 450 members. With this seemingly little success, Mark Zuckerberg who was the platform's primary developer went ahead to register the URL, www.thefacebook.com, in January 2004. Even though they least expected it, with that, him and his fellow co-founders had created the fastest growing social network in history. After its launch in February 2004, thefacebook.com, which allowed Harvard University students who signed up to the website to post their photos and share their class schedules and clubs they belonged to with fellow students, later on allowed students of Yale, Stanford, and other prestigious universities to join. And by the end of 2004, thefacebook.com had over 1 million users, with students of tens of universities who had now joined the online platform. And companies like Mastercard started paying to advertise on the site. By then, the Facebook.com had now become the immediate threat to then popular MySpace, which counted over 5 million members. The year 2005 was the company's turning point. Its online platform now become just Facebook and in that same year students from universities outside the US were allowed to become members. This was a move that sharply propagated the website and its objectives, and which saw the website grow at an exponential rate. The next year, non-student members above 13 years of age were allowed to join. Many more companies now flock the website to market and advertise, as well predicted by Mark. Previously, social media websites like SixDegrees.com created in 1997 and LiveJournal founded in 1999 pioneered the idea of creating an online platform to keep in touch with classmates, but the reason why Facebook succeeded so fabulously where pioneers, with already millions of members, have failed spectacularly can be attributed to the plunders of these early movers like Friendster and MySpace. When it came to Friendster, the site lost its steam as users left due to a combination of technical difficulties, social collisions, and a rupture of trust between users and the site, said Dana Boyd in his 2006 blog post. The fate of MySpace was also ruined when it was sold in 2005 to News Corp who focused more on using the site to optimize advertising revenue and did very little to improve the site's underlying technology and the fact that it treated the website as a media outlet rather than a technology platform even made things worse. From all indications the presence of these early movers played to Facebook's advantage. The market was ready, the increasing usage and availability of broadband internet by a diverse audience meant that entire families could participate in a social network. Also, Facebook stood superior in terms of innovation and business model could avoid all the mistakes already committed by the pioneers in the game that came before them. 
One big reason why Facebook made it is because it was obsessed with product quality as requested and needed by its users. For this, the company hired highly skilled and experienced engineers who helped build the social network's proprietary technology platform optimized to handle the hundreds of millions of users it was beginning to have. These engineers came up with new features that delighted users and kept them coming for more. Facebook also excelled due to its ability to reinvent advertising, ads could now be targeted to specific users. As a result of this in 2017, spending on digital ads surpassed that of TV at $209 billion. This was the same year Facebook hit the milestone of 2 billion active monthly users. This over 10-year dominance began swindling down with the coming of a new unprecedented threat in the picture. This year, 2022, Facebook recorded a fall in its monthly active users, as it moved from 2,936 in quarter 1 to 2, 9,934 in quarter 2. The year 2021 marked the beginning of the slump of Facebook's usage and market value. In the last quarter of 2021, and for the first time since the history of its existence, Facebook recorded a fall in its daily active users. Its daily users fell by about 500,000 users, moving from 1,930 billion to 1,929 billion when compared to the previous quarter of that same year. It should be noted that this was the global figure, and that Facebook's user growth had declined before in the US. Many reasons were blamed for the global drop in daily users. First, the number of users started stagnating when Facebook started having lesser territories to expand to, given that the social media platform had already penetrated every available market. Also, more worrying is its increasing aging user base caused by the coming of TikTok in 2016 which lured younger audiences and rendered Facebook quite obsolete to the young. The fall in this number of users translated into a fall in the earnings of the company. This shrink in earnings immediately sent shock waves through the stock market. Facebook's shares plummeted by over 20% from $323 per share to $252 per share. According to the CFO of Meta Incorporated, the fall in the users of Facebook and the resulting drop in its earnings could also be attributed to the rise in internet data prices in its biggest market, India. The true reason for Facebook's loss of popularity could be traced back to as early as February 2009 when it first changed its terms of use. This has since meant that Facebook's business model which is based on target ad that mines uses data, content and actions. Since then, Facebook has been involved in various privacy violations probes like highly mediatized sale of over 50 million Facebook users' personal data by Facebook to Cambridge Analytica in 2018. Facebook has since then been faced with a lot of resentment from users and governments who think the company could do better in protecting its users. We didn't take a broad enough view of our responsibility, and that was a big mistake. And it was my mistake, and I'm sorry. I'm concerned that press reports indicate Facebook learned about this breach in 2015, but appears not to have taken significant steps to address it until this year. For the longest run, Facebook had turned out to be addictive to a lot of people. Facebook has been making headlines for having negative impacts on mental health, which is quite opposite to a spirit-lifting TikTok praised by 31% of its users. Though Facebook still remains the most popular social media platform today, its fate will remain threatened as long as other social media platforms keep creeping up. The company is aware of this that is why it came up with short-form video features similar to TikTok called Reels. The awareness of the continuous threat is also why in its revenue prediction of the first quarter of 2022, it forecasted a lesser amount of revenue when compared to what the Wall Street predicted. In line with the threatening competition and the need for new territory to exploit, Facebook's new virtual reality product called Metaverse which targets the future is already on site. But with the continuous fall in the use and confidence in Facebook, this dream for the future could only remain a far-fetched dream. 
This is BTTV. If you enjoyed this episode, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. You could also click on the video card displaying on your screen to watch another interesting episode. Until the next episode, take care.